Every spring, millions of Christians gather together to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is the most important holiday for Christians and churches are packed. But what does the resurrection of Jesus mean for you and me? Today on Hot Topics. Hi, this is Robert Furrow and welcome to Hot Topics. The comment section is open below. We would love to hear from you. And if you're new here, consider subscribing and ringing the bell so you can get all of our new videos. Today, we're gonna look at the importance of the resurrection and what took place for us spiritually. It is the most important event in all of history and it should change us as Christians. The question really isn't, do you believe in the resurrection? But it's, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Genesis chapter one, verse one, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth because we believe in a God that created the natural order of things. And if a God who created it enters in and causes something supernatural to happen, it becomes a powerful marker for us. If supernatural things happened all of the time, then it wouldn't be that important for us. But the fact that supernatural things don't happen and then all of a sudden at one point in history, someone rises from the dead and remains alive, that becomes very powerful to us. If you don't believe in God, then it's not surprising you don't believe in the resurrection. But if you believe in God, then you can believe that God raised his son from the dead and revealed to us that God has our future in his hands. Now, before we look at the meaning of the resurrection, I want to look at some of the facts about the resurrection. You may have heard that there are some indisputable facts that the only conclusion that you can come to is that Jesus rose from the dead. Some people use five, some people use seven, some people use 12. I've heard Dr. Habermas talk about this and he does a great job with it. I'm going to look at five facts. Number one, we know for sure that Jesus lived and was crucified. There are some historians that spoke of him, and we're going to talk about those historians a little bit later on. These are accounts that are outside of the biblical narrative. The Bible is a historical document, and the reason people are critical of it is because it talks about miracles. But we find that as history goes, the Bible is incredibly accurate. I believe it's accurate when it talks about the miracles as well. But there are extra biblical sources that speak of the life of Jesus and of his crucifixion. The second fact that we know is that Jesus was buried, and then the tomb became empty. Now, the tomb being empty is an, an irrefutable fact of history, but the fact that he was buried is. The third is the disciples experienced what they believe to be the visible resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is that their lives were transformed and they lived differently because they claimed that they saw the risen Lord. And each one of these disciples ended up giving their lives for what they said and what they believed. The fourth is that the resurrection was the central part of the church. In the earliest creed that we have in the Bible, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it talks about the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15 actually predates the Gospels, and it speaks of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we know that the church was established on the teaching of the resurrection. And finally, we have the conversion of the half-brother of Jesus, James, and of Paul, the apostle. Paul was an enemy of Christ and he was converted and he became a leader in Christianity. And this conversion is incredibly powerful evidence that something was taking place. Now, when you ask people to refute these, to explain them, and what we mean by they're irrefutable, it means that the majority of historians say these things happened. We have extra biblical sources that speak of these things. And so they say these things happened. So the question is, how do you explain them? If it isn't the resurrection of Jesus, how did these men give their lives for something that they knew was a lie? If, it were, if Jesus was not resurrected, how was the entire church built upon this teaching? Okay, let's consider the importance of the resurrection for you and me. Number one, the resurrection speaks of the incredible power of God. The most powerful event to ever happen in all of history was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
someone who had died. Now, Jesus had risen people from the dead, but they were not transformed. They died again. Jesus is the first fruits, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But being the first fruit, he rose from the dead and remained alive, ascended up into heaven. And it speaks of the great power that God has. The Bible says, ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened. Seek and you will find. Jesus said, if you ask anything of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. This speaks of the tremendous power that we have available in our lives when we have a great need. We can call out upon his name. The second importance of the resurrection is that it speaks to us of the power that God has over death. Jesus destroyed sin on the cross, but he destroyed death when he rose from the dead. And we, when we partake in baptism, we go under the water as a symbol of our dying to Christ, but we come out of the water as a symbol of the newness in life that we have been given and that the Spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead and is now at work in our lives and that we know whatever happens to us now, whatever we may go through, that we have eternity that we are not a part of this world, that you and I don't belong here. We're just passing through, and we know that we have a God who has set up an eternity for us. In fact, Jesus said, I'm going away, and if I go away, I will prepare a place for you, and if I prepare a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will be also. Next, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 21, that death came into the world by one man, and that's Adam and that resurrection came into the world by one man, and that is Jesus Christ. Meaning that all of us will be resurrected and live in eternity because of the work that Jesus did for us by dying on that cross and by rising from the dead and guaranteeing our eternity. Fourth, the resurrection fulfills scripture. The Old Testament gave prophecies of the resurrection. One of them is in Psalms 22. Another one is in Isaiah 53, and the other one is Psalms chapter 16. And the fact that the Bible tells us something about a resurrection and foretells it is incredibly powerful and gives us confidence that when we are studying the Word of God, that we can trust what we are reading. Next, the Bible tells us that he is the first fruits of the resurrection. That is, that it's just a start. That just as Jesus was risen from the dead, just as his body had taken on incorruptible and his body was immortal, so the Bible says, behold, I tell you a mystery. We are not all going to sleep, but some of us are going to be changed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye. This corruptible will put on incorruptible. This mortal will put on immortality, and we will be like Christ, the Bible tells us. What an amazing promise to us that not only do we have eternity, but God's going to upgrade our bodies that this corruptible will be changed. We will not go through eternity with these bodies, but they will be changed in glorified bodies. Next, the Bible tells us that Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, when you study the scriptures, you find that the resurrection is applied to God, the Holy Spirit, and to Jesus. But Paul told us the same spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is at work within you. What a powerful thing that you and I have the Holy Spirit inside of us. He leads us. He guides us. He dwells in us. In fact, 1 Corinthians tells us, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And that same spirit that brought Jesus out of that grave is at work within you. We have an incredible source that we can call on when we need it. And finally, we know that the world is not our home. The Bible tells us that we are just passing through, that we are aliens here and that we do not belong, that our citizenship is not here on earth, but our citizenship is in heaven. And because Jesus rose from the dead and ascended to the Father, then we know that we are just passing through this earth. And that's extremely important for us to be heavenly minded. I've heard people say someone is so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good, but I don't think that's possible. I believe the more heavenly minded we are, the more good we do here on the earth for people who need to know Christ and have their eternity secure. Let me read you a passage out of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul says, so when this corruptible has put on incorruptible and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in every good work towards the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. As Paul finishes up this section on the resurrection, he encourages us to be steadfast, to be immovable, to do the work that God has called us to do because the work is so incredibly important. The resurrection of Jesus Christ guarantees us eternity, and that is incredible. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you've liked it, click the like button, and we'll see you next time on Hot Topics.